In this lecture, we're going to try to understand and interpret the meaning behind Schrodinger's equation that is used in quantum mechanics. Now, first, let's recall the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. In classical mechanics, we study the behavior and motion of an object by using a certain set of laws. So we use Newton's laws of motion as well as the law of conservation of energy to study and describe the behavior of our system. Now a system could be any object that we are studying and in this particular lecture we're going to use the electron as our system. So in classical mechanics an electron is believed to be a solid sphere. It's believed to be composed entirely of matter so it acts exactly as a particle. Now on the other hand in quantum mechanics we incorporate the wave particle duality of nature that means our electron doesn't only act as a particle it can also act as a wave and that means in quantum mechanics we cannot actually use Newton's laws of motion as well as the law of conservation of energy to study and describe the behavior of our our system, the behavior of our electron. And in quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation replaces Newton's laws of motion. So in quantum mechanics, Schrodinger's equation takes the role of describing and predicting the behavior of our systems, the behavior of our electron. So, now, Schrodinger equation is basically a differential equation that allows us to determine an important quantity in quantum mechanics known as the wave function that basically describes how our particle or our electron changes with respect to time. Now, we'll discuss what the wave function is in just a moment. First, let's look at the following equation. So there are two main forms of Schrodinger's equation. So we have the time dependent and the time independent form. This is the one dimensional non-relativistic time independent equation. So the one dimensional part means that our object, our system in this case, let's say the electron is traveling along a single dimension, in this case along the x-axis. The time independent part it means that the wave function does not depend on time, it only depends on our position. And in this equation, the wave function is given by psi with respect to x because the wave function psi depends on x, the spatial position of our object electron along some horizontal one-dimensional axis. Now, Basically, this differential equation was invented by Erwin Schrodinger in order to describe the matter wave that is produced by our electron, by our objects, which are found on the subatomic and atomic levels. In particular, the above equation describes a single free particle electron moving along a single dimension, let's suppose, along the x-axis. So the free particle simply means our electron does not actually feel any form or a force. So that implies the energy and the momentum of our particle, of our electron, remains constant. So, as we just mentioned, in quantum mechanics, because of the wave-particle duality of nature, we cannot use Newton's laws of motion to describe the behavior and predict the behavior of our systems. Instead, we have to use Schrodinger's equation. And Schrodinger's equation itself basically allows us to determine something known as the wave function. But what exactly is the wave function? Now, in quantum mechanics, we use the wave function, which is basically a quantity, and we use it to describe the displacement or amplitude of our matter wave that is produced by that 
particle, in our case, our electron. Now, by taking the square of the absolute value of the wave function, we can also determine the probability of finding the particle at some given moment in time. So, the wave function is basically what describes how our system on the atomic and subatomic level behaves. The wave function describes the behavior of our electrons. Now, unlike in classical mechanics, which basically uses a deterministic theory, quantum mechanics uses a statistical theory. It uses a statistical approach. So basically, we cannot actually predict the exact location of an electron, but rather we can use probability to predict where our electron might be found with some high probability. And this is exactly what the wave function allows us to do. So, we can basically conclude that in quantum mechanics, Schrodinger's equation takes or replaces Newton's laws of motion and we use Schrodinger's equation to basically determine what the wave function uh, is. And then we basically use that wave function to determine the behavior of our subatomic system, for example, our electron. And this entire idea comes from wave particle duality of nature. The fact that on the atomic or subatomic level, our electron or any other particle doesn't only act as a particle, but it can also act as a wave.